Hey, welcome back to another day at Bomb Reviews. Just a reminder, Bomb stands for Bags O' Mystery. Basically, I'm showing you some old things, usually equipment or machines that are all mechanical, that are about 100 or more years old. And since I don't have the original boxing, we're doing unbagging, thus Bomb Reviews. So today, I've got a 100-year-old time machine per se. It's a clock, but it also keeps track of time. And it was one of the first time recording devices that was successfully used in large manufacturing environments. So today we're going to take a look at it. I'll show you how it works. I'll show you inside the machine and show you why this was a pretty special machine back in the 1900s. All right, let's unbag this thing. I had to use one of my biggest bags. Didn't still didn't quite cover it all, but here it is. There you go. It's the International Time Recorder clock. So this clock was made sometime before 1911, and we know that because the logo on it says International Time Recorder Company. And that was a precursor to International Business Machines, or IBM, which bought them and merged with another company in about 1924, I believe. So International Time Recorder Company, um, this clock and its, its design and its workings was created by somebody named Willard Bundy. He patented it in 1888. I'll run you through real quickly how this thing works, how it was used, and then we'll take a look inside the machine. You all know what a time clock is, I'm sure, but as time goes on, I think fewer and fewer people are using the actual thing called the time machine. There are actually still some mechanical ones in use in factories across the world. Otherwise, I think a lot of them, a lot of people are using computer-based uh, clock in and clock out software. But this is what it was all based on. And this clock, as you can see um, on the side, there was a lock. There isn't any more, which would make this pretty uh, not very accurate because anybody who wanted could just come in and change the time backward or forward. But the basic concept is everybody has a time card. They walk through a line in the beginning of the day. They pull their time card out. They put it, they line it up with this red slot right here on the correct day. They stamp it and this is a close-up of what that looks like. It's got the day of the month, the time of the day, and then it also shows um, minutes in the form of, actually in the form of uh, tenths of an hour. So you'll see an eight, a one, a two, a three, and that translates to six minute increments of the day. Um, so that's punch in and then there's punch out same thing, end of the day, come in, line it up for out, punch it, and there you go. That's really it. There's a bell inside, as you heard. Um, that's about all there is. Uh, you wind it every eight days. Speaking of winding, um, there's a big key inside. It's heavy duty. You know, it, you really got to get a grip on it. You go counterclockwise with your wind. Pretty, pretty well wound already, but that's it. You just wind both sides, and um, I'll show you how that works. If you if you know anything about physics, you know that pendulums don't swing in perpetuity. They they actually need a little bit of help. So there's the springs are actually um, lending their their energy to a little lever that's giving just a slight little kick. And I'll show that in a minute. Wow, it's loud in here. Let's take a look inside and see how this thing works. 
So there are four hooks that hold this front metal plate in place. Again, if this door is locked, you're not going to get in here and be able to mess with any of this. So there's there are the other two hooks down here that hold that. And then this thing swings forward and you can see there's a serial number R10439. Um, here's the lever. You see there's a rubber, a little rubber stamp. When you push that, it stamps up. There's a, um, two spools of, of ribbon. Um, these I actually replaced with a more modern ribbon that has some ink on it. And this is, this is the slot that lines up with the card. So as you put your card in and hit the stamp, that's what's making the impression on the card. Now this whole mechanism is what keeps track of day and hour. There are two levers here, one to change the hour, one to change the date. And as the clock gets close to the hour here while we're talking, it's going to click over to the next hour and makes a nice loud clunk. There it is, and you saw the lever drop. So you can also advance the hours. You can see that the date changes going up as I do that. As I get towards the end of a day, then that drops also and changes the date. So what's driving the, the changes to these gears here is this bar right here. And it's adjustable, but this bar is hooked up to the gearing in the clock, which as it turns, it turns this post, the post is changing as you can see, um, has this wheel and changes the wheels for date and time. And this is what it looks like with the clock face off. It's a beautiful brass mechanism. You can see one of the springs which isn't wound all the way in. Um, we'll take a closer look from an inside view. You, you'll notice that the pendulum is only swinging a very small amount. It really doesn't need to go that far. Up here is the, the main escapement, it's called, and that's these gears are basically holding it from, if you lifted that up or removed that, the whole thing would just spin and, and unwind. The pendulum's plated in nickel. Looks like it's seen a few, few bangs and bumps. All right, so that's it for this episode of Bomb Reviews. Join me next time, I'm gonna show you a 100 year old calculator. It doesn't take batteries, it's all mechanical, and it adds just as well as it did 100 years ago. Can't wait to show it to you, see you then.